Well, hey everybody. Uh, here we are out at the, the barn or the shop or the kitchen, whatever we're gonna call it. I think the barn works for now. Um, I'm standing at the, uh, the garage door in the front and uh, just kind of panning around because I just got concrete. <laughs> I never would have thought I'd been so excited to get concrete. Uh, may have seen this barn in a few other videos as um, for years it was uh, just the barn as you see it and the, uh, the floor was uh, just this ground asphalt, crushed asphalt stuff. But uh, finally was able to get it done to, um, to have the concrete poured and, and it's hardened now. Uh, contractor said we're allowed to be on it. Don't drive on it yet, he says, but uh, anyhow. So, so I'll just take you on a brief tour and kind of go over what I'm thinking um, this barn will look like. So this front section that we're standing in, all the way back up to this uh, that wall there, is gonna be the wood shop. So I'll, eventually I'll get out of the basement weird shop into a proper wood shop that'll be 30 foot wide and 25 deep to that wall there. That back section, which would be approximately 15 feet wide, I'm sorry, 15 feet deep and 40 feet wide will be the kitchen. And that's where I'll be able to do my honey, my maple, any of my cooking, food preservation stuff that I like to do. Um, Right now, I'm, I'm doing it all in our home kitchen, which is just not big enough. So as it stands today, you can see this uh, block. This will eventually have a wall and a, a door right here. But there'll be a wall that runs up just to the back side of the stairs here. And it'll be completely closed off business in the front, party in the back. Um, I do want to insulate everything, and it's certainly the exterior wall, and I do want to do some type of insulation in the ceiling of the building, not counting the loft. I haven't figured out the loft yet. And then put some type of wall covering over the top, this is the back door out of the kitchen, and it just looks out onto a maple tree. I tapped that maple tree last year. I wasn't really thrilled with it. I don't think I'll tap it again. That's a nice view out of the back door. Moving over to here, um, I had plans, the best laid plans of mice and men, but I had plans to have the plumbing roughed in and inspected prior to pour so that they could have poured around the, the toilet flange and any kind of conduit for piping and drains that I had put in. But uh, as you can see, I didn't get that far. And so I asked them to leave me a, leave me a spot where I could. So that's the bathroom. Um, bathroom will be their future. And I don't know how large the bathroom will be. If it's just a shop kitchen, it's just gonna be a bathroom sink and, and that's it. If it uh, plans change, then it can be larger, but that's just for the drains, to get the drains out of the building in the water, in and out of the building. Okay, so the next thing I'll show you before we go upstairs, there's not a lot to see, but I can't tell you how cool it is to be walking on concrete in here after several years. Uh, that tag, you can't read it, I can't either, but I wrote it so I remember what it says. It says, uh, approximate location preferred for panel. Okay, so I've been talking to an electrician, and somewhere in this corner will be the service panel for the building. Um, once he gets me a quote, if it's something I can do, then, then we'll have power in here. In the meantime, while we're just getting going, I, I would just run everything off the generator. Um, stairway there to the loft, and we'll get to the loft here in a little bit. So 
this is the view looking up toward the road and as you can see it's it's fairly wooded but um we we wanted to come underground with the power because the power company will make you clear a 15 foot right away so imagine that that pole there with the swarm trap on it is a, is a power line pole it would have to be cleared 15 feet in all directions all the way up so i didn't want to i didn't want to have to cut all those trees down to run above ground power poles so I had a guy come in he um he he did the uh directional boring and he pulled conduit from the road it's about 600 feet to the transformer pad and then he just did an open ditch conduit to the corner of the building there. That orange is uh, future fiber or cable, and you can't really see it, but the conduit for the power is there. So this is a loft and the lighting's not great, but we can fix that once we have some power. This is just where I store all my stuff. This was the only place I could store um, until they poured concrete um, without having to move everything. So here we have a couple swarm traps, some honey buckets, an extractor, extractor stand. Oh, I have this over here. Screen bottoms, shim feeders, solid bottoms, inner covers, boxes and boxes and boxes. Behind them, uh, telescoping covers, honey supers, spare boxes all over the place drums these are food grade drums with liners in them I um, have plans to put my sap in those so I think my days of hauling sap home to process it are gone which makes me so happy uh, more beekeeping stuff this is a uh, dust collector moved it up here it's it's heavier than it looks <laughs> particularly on this end it's very heavy but we'll get that back downstairs once I get a helper um sap buckets this is kind of a cool thing a friend of mine built this uh for our youth soccer program it it's a two-piece thing it's a it's like a putt putt mini golf thing for a soccer ball really cool use it kids have fun with it uh, frame rack storage has been another video uh, this is some of the live edge slabs that uh, jacob and i cut years ago no maybe not years ago months ago up here to dry and then that's another part of the dust collector system so future plans do include putting some decking down um, out here on the on the gambrel part you see if it's so we're eight feet or so to the ceiling of this and 16 foot wide but then I want to put um, if I just, I have a lot of storage room out here, of course there's no way to safely access it. So a couple things I need to do, I need to either put some type of barrier here. Right now we just have a policy that uh, we just don't go near the edge. Um, but once we get that decking down, um, that will open up a ton more storage because it's on both sides. So the loft is, uh, 16 foot wide so 16 foot wide eight foot high and 40 foot long tons of storage room up here but like a lot of things in my life it's a little bit disorganized but we'll get it we'll make it better last thing before we wrap it up because uh, i do have stuff i need to move into here other stuff to take care of today i did go with an insulated door um my cousin Jeremy at JK Door Solutions uh, came out one day and put this in and uh, I will need to uh, adjust the door. He left it a little bit uh, high so that I could lower it by putting ceiling on the there. So we'll do that someday, not today, but uh, other than that, I'm really excited to be able to start moving stuff in here. I've got stuff scattered, like I said, in the weird shop. I've got stuff out in the garage. I've got stuff stored here, there, and yonder um, because I, I didn't, wasn't able to put it out here. And uh, you may know I'm a great accumulator of things. And uh, 
don't do a very good job of getting rid of anything. But anyway, this is uh, day one of having the new barn and having it be usable. So I'm going to start moving a few things in here now and uh, I'll try to do my best to chronicle it uh, as we go. So thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions or comments, put, put them in the comment section below. Otherwise, hit that button in the bottom right for a subscription.